This video is going to go over how you can make artwork like this by graphing linear equations using the slope intercept form as well as using domains and I'm using desmos.com so if you'd like to try this out you can go to desmos.com hit start graphing and then you'll get this blank grid where you can type in equations here. Now this is actually made from all of these equations and I'm using the slope intercept form y equals mx plus b that's the form that I'm using and then here it goes from negative 1 to 0. So x is between negative 1 and 0. That means that this is actually for this line segment right here. The values that are being input for x are from negative 1 to 0, but not including negative 1 and 0. So just everything in between. And that's how you can make line segments that don't go on forever. Now before we start looking at how to actually make this whole shape here, let's just do a quick review of linear equations for the slope intercept form so that you really understand what you're doing when you're graphing these lines. I'm going to start with y equals x and then move down toward these slightly more complicated equations which are all in slope intercept form. And let's talk about why the equations match the shapes that we get for these graphs. So looking at y equals x where y is the vertical position and x is the horizontal position. This is the y axis, this is the x axis. Okay, if we plug in 0 for x, then y has to be 0 as well. So x is 0, y is 0. This is called the y intercept, the point where or the height where the line crosses the y axis. So this has a y intercept of 0. All right? Now, the height's going to be the same as the horizontal distance is what this is saying. So if I go horizontally 1, to the right, I'll go up one. If I go to the right two, I'll go up two. Uh, if x is negative one, y is negative one as well. And all the other points on here, like if x is one and a half, y is gonna be the same value, it's gonna be one and a half. So all these other points make up the line. So for y equals two x, this is saying that the height is twice the x value. That means if x is zero, well two times zero is also zero. So I get a y-intercept of 0 again. But when x is 1, 2 times 1, well, let's see, x is 1, 2 is going to be your height here, which is twice that. And when x is 2, y is going to be twice that, which is 4. When x is negative 1, y is twice that, which is negative 2. Let's go to y equals 2 thirds x. This tells me that the height is 2 thirds the horizontal distance. So it's not going to be as much as the horizontal distance. I won't go up or down as much as I go over except for when x is 0. So when x is 0, again, it's going to be a height of 0. But when x is 1, then y is going to be 2 thirds of 1. So that's just 2 thirds. So I go over 1 and I've gone up 2 thirds. Now I could think, where would be another point where I get two integer values for x and y? In order to do that, I would need to make this not become a fraction here, all of this, I should say. So I can make the 3 cancel out. If I plug in a 3 for x, then 3 divided by 3 is 1, so y is going to be 2. When x is 3, y is 2. So 3, 2, there's a point right there. And this is our slope here, really, this fraction, the number that's being multiplied by x, or you know, it could be called the coefficient of x, is going to be your slope. That's how much you go up for how much you go over. I'm going to go up 2 every time I go over 3. So up 2 over 3. And these points that have integer x and y values, where we don't have fractions, like this would be a fraction, and this would be a fraction for the height, the integer uh, points are called lattice points. So those are often helpful for finding the slope. You can look for two lattice points and see how much do you go up for how much you go over. I could even start here and say, hey, I go up two and over three. So that's a slope of two thirds. The next equation, y equals negative five over two x has a negative slope. This one says that I'm going down five for every two that I go over. Because if I plugged in 2 here for x, the 2's cancel out, so x would be 2, but I'd end up with y equals negative 5. And this one also has a y-intercept of 0. I should have probably mentioned that at first, but, you know, we go through 0, 0 again, because negative 5 over 2 times 0 
is zero. But that other point, if I plug in two for x, then y is going to be negative five. So let's see, does that match? I plug in two, negative five, right. So the slope is down five over two, negative five over two. All right, the next one is going to be y equals 2x plus 1. And let's compare this to y equals 2x and see what's the same and what's different. First of all, I see that they're parallel lines. So the slope is the same. Here's the slope, 2, right? 2 over 1. I could turn it into a fraction. I go up 2 every time I go over 1. Does that work? Let's say I go up 2 and over 1. Yes. But the difference is that this has a y-intercept of 1. Because remember, if we plug in 0 for x, 2 times 0 is 0, but y is going to be 1 because that's what this part of the uh, expression, or this expression would turn into 1 when we plug in 0 for x. So this number here, the constant, is the y-intercept. It's right there. Let's go on to the next graph. So y equals 2 thirds x plus 2. Well, I said that the constant was the y-intercept. Does that work for this as well? The constant here is 2. Let's see, does it go through at a height of 2? Yes, it does, because when x is 0, when x is 0 here, then 2 thirds times 0 is 0. Ah, so x is 0, and then y is going to be this number, because this is 0. So y is going to be 2. So that's that point there. Then the slope is... Remember, it's going to be the coefficient of x, 2 thirds. Well, let's see. Does that work here too? I can take this point and this point. These are two lattice points. I go up 2 and over 3. Oh, yeah, that works out. Every time x increases by 3, y increases by 2. Now, the last thing that would be good to know how to do is how to show just part of a line. And in order to do that, um, let's say that I want to show just from negative 3 to 0 for this green line. I can change the domain. That means what values for x am I going to input. I don't want to input all the values for this. I want to go just from negative 3 to 0. So I'm going to say with a bracket there, I'll write negative 3 is less than x is less than 0. And the bracket sign there. And that says that... I'm not including negative 3, but everything above negative 3 all the way to 0, not including 0, is going to be used to be inputted into this function. And all the values I'd get for y will be shown here. So it shows just that part of the graph. So if you understood how to make the slope of an equation, how to get the y-intercept, and how to show just a portion of the graph, you're ready to make that artwork. Here's a new blank grid that I can graph on, and I'm going to show the picture of what I made in the bottom right corner just as a reference for what I'm working toward. And then I'll show a few of the equations that are going to be needed to make this. And then when you get the idea, you'll be able to make a similar shape, you know, with different colors, different size. You can be really creative with this. So I'm going to do this for my first line. I'm going to say y equals, well, let's see, what's the line that I want? The first one I'm going to make is to connect this point down to here. And what's the slope? Well, I go down 7 and over 1. All right, so the slope is negative 7 over 1. And I could just write negative 7, but I'll write it like that for now. Times x, so that gives me my slope. And then the y-intercept is going to be at a height of 7. So I'll say plus 7. I'm only going to show this, you know, part of the graph that goes from 0 to 1 for x. So I need to change the domain and say... 0 is less than x is less than 1. And then you can change the colors here as well. I'll show you where you can do that. If you hit this, uh, I guess, edit list button, that gear button there, I'll click on this. I'll make that one red. Say done. I've got my first one. Next, I'm going to have a line that goes from here to here. So it's a y-intercept of 6. I'm going down 6 and over 2. So this is y equals negative 6 over 2 times x. And I said the y-intercept was 6, so plus 6. You might say, hey, negative 6 over 2, that can simplify to negative 3. So I'm going to do that. I'm actually going to change this to negative 3. The one above, you know, negative 7 over 1, I could have changed that as well. Um, it's not a bad idea to simplify things when you can. In fact, that's a really good habit to get into. For now, it's just going to leave that one there. But this is going to be from 0 to 2. So 0 is less than x is less than 2. And I'll change this one as well, make it orange. 
Okay, next I want to go from here over to here. So that is y equals, let's see the slope. I go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I go over 1, 2, 3. Negative 5 over 3 times x plus the y-intercept is at 5. I'm going to show this from 0 to, from 0 over to 1, 2, 3. Right there. I'll change this color as well. Let's make that green. All right, so I'll just kind of fill in a bunch of the other ones here and maybe show a few others as I make this shape just to talk about the different slopes. Um, these are all negative slopes. You know, it'll be positive slopes on this side and the y-intercepts will be negative when they go um, on this, this part here. The last thing I should mention is that these are different quadrants. So this is quadrant one where the y-axis and the x-axis turn this into kind of four different parts. Each of these are called quadrants. So this is quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. All right, I have the first quadrant, quadrant one, filled out. Now, you may notice some patterns here. In fact, I'm gonna go back and switch this. This was negative six over two. And you may notice some patterns with the coefficients here. I'm not gonna say what they are, but you, know, you can think about what patterns you get with the fractions here, as well as there might be some patterns here to kind of discover while doing this. So I'm gonna move on to quadrant two now. Quadrant two, the first line that I'm gonna make is gonna connect from here to here. So that's gonna be a slope of, I go up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and over one. Y equals seven over one, or just seven X plus, it's gonna go through at a height of seven, seven. And this is gonna be from negative one, is less than X is less than zero. I'll change this color here too. Okay, so I've got the first line. I'll fill out the rest uh, over here and then kind of work down to this part. Okay, quadrant two is finished. So now I'm on to quadrant three down here. So quadrant one, two, three, four. So for three, I'll start with this line here. I'm gonna go down one over seven. So that is y equals negative one over seven times x. And then here's, here's the line. I wanna drop this all down by one. I want everything to be one point lower. So I'm gonna have minus one. And you can see that, that that dropped the whole line down by one. And my y-intercept is also here. So that'll go from negative seven to zero. Now I'm just gonna finish the rest here, kind of fill in everything in quadrant three and quadrant four. So there we go, now I've finished my shape that I wanted to make, but hopefully you have all the information so that you can make some neat graphs as well like this. We talked about the slope intercept form and where the slope is in the equation and what that does to the line. We also talked about the y-intercept, where that is in the equation and what that looks like on the graph. We also talked about the idea of a domain, which is what values for x are we plugging into the equation that are gonna be graphed. And by putting those parts together, you can make your own artwork like this. So I hope with this activity, you can become really comfortable with graphing and have some fun in the process.